Hello SpaceX fans, we're back with another exciting video from the world of space. Today in this video, we're talking about the SpaceX launching their new Starship to orbit in 2021. Isn't that exciting? If you're new to our channel, we're glad to have you on board. We post daily updates from the space world. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to never miss out on any updates from the world of space. If everything goes as planned, SpaceX will attempt to launch a Starship into orbit for the first time early this year. Elon Musk said Wednesday, November 17th, that the company's first Starship orbital launch attempt is planned for January or February. And ideally, that initial watershed moment will be followed by a slew of others soon after. We hope to do a dozen Starship launches next year, Musk said during a live stream presentation at the joint fall meeting of the Space Studies Board and the Board on Physics and Astronomy, both of which are part of the United States National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. Perhaps more, he said. SpaceX had hoped to launch Starship on its first orbital test flight in January or February if the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, completed a Programmatic Environmental Assessment, PEA, of the company's South Texas launch site by December 31st, as planned. Starship is made up of two parts, both of which are fully and rapidly reusable. A massive first-stage booster called Super Heavy and a 160-foot-tall, 50-meter spacecraft called Starship. Both are propelled by SpaceX's next-generation Raptor engines, which has six in the Starship and 29 in the Super Heavy. At the moment, at least, the booster will eventually sport 33 Raptors, Musk said. This ambitious transportation system is being developed by SpaceX to transport people and payloads to the Moon, Mars, and other destinations. Ultimately, Starship is intended to be a generalized transport mechanism for the larger solar system, Musk explained. SpaceX has conducted a number of test flights with Starship prototypes from its Starbase facility near the South Texas village of Boca Chica. However, those flights had a maximum altitude of about 6 miles, 10 kilometers, and used vehicles with only three engines. The upcoming orbital test flight will feature a Starship prototype called SN20, which will be equipped with six Raptors, as well as a 29-engine Super Heavy known as Booster 4. The pair will take off from Starbase. Even if SpaceX wanted to, it couldn't launch the mission right now because the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration is conducting an environmental assessment of the orbital launch activities at Starbase. That review is expected to be completed by December 31st, according to FAA officials, and SpaceX plans to launch soon after. But, as Musk mentioned, we shouldn't expect a picture-perfect flight. There's a lot of risk in this first launch, he said, so I wouldn't say it's likely to succeed, but I believe we'll make significant progress. According to Musk, this planned progress will result in roughly a dozen launches over the course of the year, proving out the Starship system enough for it to begin operational emissions in 2023. Starship already has some customers, according to SpaceX. For example, Japanese billionaire Yasaka Mazawa has reserved the vehicle for a flight around the moon, with a planned launch date of 2023. Earlier last year, NASA chose Starship as the first human landing system for its Artemis program, which claims to establish a long-term human presence on and around the moon by the end of the decade. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson recently stated that the first crewed Artemis moon landing will take place no later than 2025. The agency had previously stated that it was aiming for 2024. Over time, SpaceX intends to use Starship to help colonize Mars, transforming humanity into a multi-planet species a long-held and frequently stated ambition of Musk's. As long as we set up some propellant depots along the way, a starship could even help humanity planet hop from Mars to the dwarf planet Cirrus, the largest object in the asteroid belt to Jupiter's moons, Musk said. And in this grander vision, such journeys would involve more than just a few starship craft. I think we'll need a thousand ships or something like that for life to become multiplanetary, Musk said. Scaling up production to meet that anticipated demand, especially for the engines, given that each Super Heavy will require 33, will be a significant challenge. But SpaceX is already preparing to meet it, according to Musk, who stated that the company is building the factory to make lots of starships and lots of engines in parallel. That factory is located in McGregor, Texas, where SpaceX tests its engines. Musk has made no secret of his ambitions to reach the moon and one day colonize Mars, to make humanity a multi-planetary species. SpaceX is already making moves for 2022, including flying the first Axiom space mission, Axe 1, to the International Space Station and continuing work on its human landing system contract, 
in support of the Artemis Human Moon Landing Program. The HLS contract was delayed several months due to a series of protests and legal challenges associated with SpaceX receiving a solo supplier award from NASA, but is now ongoing after competitor Blue Origin lost its protest November 4th. The first Artemis landing, however, was pushed back to 2025, from 2024, in part due to the HLS situation. But Axiom will likely take a lot of attention next year, as it will be the first all-private mission to the space station. Among the four crew members is Canadian investor and philanthropist Mark Pathy, who is working with a coalition of universities across the country to create a package of science experiments to fly with him. One of the researchers in that group is Adam Sirik, who specializes in family medicine and aerospace medicine. He co-founded space healthcare company Leap Biosystems and teaches at Western University in Central Canada. SpaceX has the agility of the newcomer in industry, even though they're not really newcomers anymore, Sirik told Space.com, saying the company appears more nimble than competitors Boeing and United Launch Alliance. They have the agility and the ability to pivot and adapt to the customer's needs that the larger legacy organizations don't demonstrate. Sirik said this is most evident with the Crew Dragon vehicle, which was developed with funding from NASA for NASA missions, but is also available for companies like Axiom Space to hire out as needed. Indeed, just days ago, NASA greenlighted Axiom for a second space flight to the ISS on Crew Dragon. As a medical doctor, Sirik added that SpaceX will need to make sure to build out its infrastructure to support human missions properly. In the old days, he said, NASA's recovery operations included support from the U.S. Coast Guard and the U.S. Navy during splashdowns of missions from Mercury to Apollo. With SpaceX now executing splashdowns, it will need to figure out how to have medical personnel available to move around to wherever the spacecraft happens to be, perhaps very quickly if there is an onboard emergency. That said, SpaceX does work with the U.S. Coast Guard on recovery operations, at least for now. SpaceX will need to build a new series of industries and employ a whole new group of people, recruiting them from the government primarily to start, and then training up a new cadre of individuals with these advanced life-saving techniques, Sirik said. It's a whole new area that they're going to have to develop, and quickly, to support a heavy launch schedule. With this, we've come to the end of the video. Congrats on having great attention. Let us know how excited you are about these new ventures of SpaceX down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until we meet next time.